Reverend Porter mentioned something about our positioning. I said, oh, wait a minute. I said, okay, our positioning. I've been so focused, listen, on trying to position instead of gaining the wisdom to position. The focus should have been gaining the wisdom so I can position. So I've been trying to position without the wisdom. Well, I've been trying to position without the word of God. You see? So what have happened, it had put me in a deficiency because I've been trying to position myself in a place where I shouldn't be without having the word. So I got into prayer and God dropped it down on what we had to do. As soon as we did that, bam, the money showed up in less than, what, a half an hour. Not only the money showed up, we got there, we had such favor, and then I had wisdom. Now, the guy that we sat down to do the deal with, like I said, I'm just taking a sidetrack here for a minute. But see, the guy that we sat down to do the deal with, okay, he tried to up this price for us putting money down. I said, oh, heck no. We're going to get that truck, and this is how much we're going to put down, period. This is how it's going to be. Either we're going to flow with it or not. But see, now what happened is because we have dealt with this, I had the boldness to step up because I was under a different anointing. I was under God's hand. I wasn't under my own. I was under, so it gave me the strength and the boldness I need to deal with. It. So that came. When that came, the service manager put us up for eight days, fed us, ain't charged us nothing, let us wash our clothes, let us do what we had to do, nothing. He ain't asked us for nothing. Cook for us and everything. Now you gonna tell me that ain't God or that ain't God. Because I, this we, me and Reverend, decided to put the word on this and to reposition ourselves to get the wisdom from God, this is what happened. I couldn't have did that on my worst day, or my good day, or my better day, or every day you want to call it, I couldn't have did it. It taught me how important the word is. If God needed his word to frame the earth, don't you think we need the word to frame our life? When we don't use God's word to frame our life, then we are subject to everything that is against the will of God. Romans 12, 2, turn there real quick. It says, and be not, what? Conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your, what? Mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Well, now, in 2 Corinthians five seventeen, it says, if any man... What it says, what it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. He's a new creature. All things have passed. All things become what? New, right? All things become new. Now listen, when we start following the guidelines of Romans 12, 2, things in your life have no choice but to become new because what's happening is you are developing your mindset by transforming it by God's word, that framed the world. If the world was framed by God, he can frame your mind. If you allow him to frame your mind, then the things that has been dealing, that you have been dealing with, you no longer have to deal with them. God's going to deal with them. And then comes the transformation. That means you will start becoming at peace of what. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You will become at peace. You will become at peace. Why? It's because if the word became flesh through Jesus, what do you think the word's going to become through you? If the word became flesh through Jesus, what do you think is going to be? What do you think will happen to you? There are times in our life that we feel as though that we just can't get out of a rut. We just feel stuck. It doesn't matter what we do or what we try to do. You see? Now, Matthews 8.8, 8, turn it. It says, let's, let's look at, let's go up to the sixth verse. And saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. 
And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. What, so what, what are we seeing? We see in the word in motion. Y'all missed that. Remember, John said the word became flesh, right? So Jesus is the word. The ministry of Jesus is built on the word of the father, right? He says, I, I only say what my father tells me to say. I only do what the father. So Jesus is the word. So what was about to happen is the word was being ready to move on the behalf of the centurion. Now listen, and the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof. Speak to what? Word. Only, and my servant shall be what? Heal. Healed. At the time of the centurion that was going through a, a difficult situation dealing with his servant, he knew that the only thing that could bring his servant back was the word. What do you think could bring you back? If you, if you are lost and if things are happening to you that they shouldn't, the only thing that can bring you back is the word. Nothing else can do it. Not your program, not your theory, not your efforts. Nothing can do it. The centurion was caught up in a situation where he had, he didn't know how to bring his, 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 his servant to, to heal. He didn't know. But he knew one thing, that he needed the word of Jesus. He knew that he needed this one thing. What is it that you need? What is it that you need? You need the word of Jesus to get into that situation to turn that thing around. So now, for I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go and he goeth, and to another, come and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he do it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled, and he said unto them, that follow, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, nor not in Israel. So it takes the word of God to build your faith. Anything outside of the word will not build your faith. If you know what it's going to build? Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's going to build fear. Anything outside of the word of God won't build faith. It's going to build fear because you will step in and start depending on your own devices. Good God Almighty. I'm trying to tell y'all something here. The Holy Ghost is trying to tell y'all. Y'all been missing a key element on some things is because you have not been applying the word properly. I have missed some things because I have not applied the word properly. Once I put the word on it, then I had Jesus moving in my behalf. The Father moving in my behalf. The Holy Ghost moving in my behalf. It came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. We all know the story. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at who feet? Jesus' feet. And heard what? Heard his what? She sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. So that means she shut everything down. That means she shut everything down to position herself to sit at the feet of Jesus. When she sat at the feet of Jesus, Jesus acknowledged that quickly. There are times you're going to have to shut everything down just to sit at his feet. When we get too busy, we lose our authority and our power and our understanding and our position. Praise God. We lose it. When we lose our position, we lose focus. We lose focus. Then we get destroyed. We get brought down. We get worried. We get tired. And then we start saying crazy things out of our mouth that we shouldn't say. Here it is. She, Jesus is in the house. He is in the house. And she wanted him, Mary wanted him to talk to her about doing some work. Are you kidding me? She had, my God, she had lost her, she had lost it. And let, let's go back and see how Jesus handled this. He said to her, but Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, 
Does thou not care? Does thou not care? Are you kidding me? Does thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone, bid her therefore that she help me? He wanted her to leave his feet to help her. How many times, how many times have we left Jesus' feet and we tried to take a party with us? When we found out, when we left his feet, we walked into the biggest disaster that we have ever ran across. Come on, then it says, And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Are you troubled about many things? Are you bothered? What is, what is, what got in your Cheerios? What is bothering you? What is, what is disturbing you? What is it? So it says, Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. You see this? It's needful. And Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. When you apply yourself and sit at the feet of Jesus, nothing can take it from you. That means when the word is spoken over you, that means the word, no matter what hell rises up, no matter what happens, when you sit at Jesus' feet and the word comes, it ain't no devil, it ain't nothing can stand against that word. That means whatever's about to take place, baby, it's going to happen because Jesus said it will. We need to take this word, shut some stuff down, put yourself at Jesus' feet. When that happens, guess what? Your next th- your next word come out your mouth, bring it on. I, I got something for you. Bring, bring it on. Yeah. I bring it on. I got yeah. something for you. Yeah. Because now you have and you know you got all of heaven back in you. Yeah. You got everything in your court. You have went to the courts of heaven. Yeah. You have prayed. You have sought some things. Now, now, since you have sat at Jesus' feet, you can implement this thing. You can put this thing to pass. You can put an end to it finally. I don't know about you, but I know about me. I am tired of dealing with stuff that I have no authority over. How I know? Because I'm getting my butt whipped. Don't go step that and hold it in now. We know it. We're getting our butt whipped on some things. You're getting your butt whipped. It's because you ain't applying yourself. You didn't position yourself like you should. 